On today's show, we're going to talk about this little beauty right here, the Bosch 12-inch Glide Sliding Compound Miter Saw. Hit it! Now, I've been dragging my feet on talking about this saw, primarily because the way I use a miter saw is fairly simple. I'm in a very controlled situation here, so most of my cuts from a miter saw are gonna be at 90 degrees, and if it cuts dead on 90 and gives me a nice wobble-free cut, I'm a happy camper. So I don't ask much of my miter saw, but folks are wondering how this saw compares to what I was using previously, which is the Festool Capex. It's a very expensive saw. It's $1,500, more than twice the price of this guy. This is only $600. So people wanna know, what do I miss about the Capex? Is it really worth spending all of that extra money to get the Capex? And spoiler alert, no, it's not. At least if you're the kind of woodworker like I am in this controlled environment. Now, if you're a road warrior and you're doing all kinds of angled cuts on interior trim and working on a client's home, something like that, yeah, it might be worth it to get the Capex. But in my case, it's just not, all right? So let's uh, quickly go through some of the things that I really like about the Bosch, stuff I don't like, and even some of the things that I miss uh, by not having the Capex here anymore. Let's get into it. One of the first things you'll notice about this saw is this articulating arm, and that unique feature allows this saw to go right up against the wall. Most uh, compound miter saws like this will actually have bars that extend beyond the back of the saw, which means you have to have this thing pretty far away from the wall. If you have a small shop, that could be problematic. So from the back to the very front tip, you've got about 33 inches here. And by comparison, here's a Makita that I'm also auditioning, and that guy comes in at around 41 inches. The saw bed is nice and flat and wide. There's a lot of working surface here. If you put a straight edge on there, you can see the center section, which is really the most important. This is your real reference surface that's dead flat on mine and we've also got these retractable supports on both sides that's included with the saw sometimes on other saws that's an add-on that you have to pay for so it's nice to have it included the handle is really intuitive and obvious as handles should be if you have to think about it too much it's poorly designed but you've got a right-handed operation and left-handed and it's very comfortable now the handle is really something you take for granted until you find one that isn't quite right. And when I first got the Capex, that was an adjustment because you have this sort of vertical orientation and you have to really get your hand up and over to release the thumb lock and then be able to pull the saw down. So ergonomically speaking, I really didn't like the way that felt. This feels natural, kind of the way it's supposed to be. Now bevel and miter adjustments on this are pretty straightforward. You just have a detent release here that allows you to go to any angle you want. You can pop this guy back down and then find your detents again and tighten it down. So very smooth operation. The buttons are just huge and obvious and almost, you know, toy-like in a way. So, you know, you really can't miss their function. Now I don't make bevel cuts at the miter saw very often, but when I do, I know I'm gonna miss one aspect of the Capex that was really cool. Um, and that is the simple adjustability. There's just a knob that you turn to the side. So once you release it, you can just kind of rotate it and the head moves and pivots very, very nicely. Here, we've got to undo a lever like so, and now we have zero to 45 degrees adjustability. Uh, now my saw is not secured to the table, which makes it a little harder to do this, but you know, it moves, it's fine, it's okay, uh, but it's nothing like being able to just turn a little dial and really dial in the perfect degree setting. One of the first things I did with this saw when I got it in the shop was upgrade the blade. I've got a Forest Chop Master in there which provides incredibly awesome cuts. And that's one of the benefits of this saw is it has standard arbor sizes and you're gonna have a whole slew of choices in what type of blade you wanna put in there. The Capex does require a special arbor size so you're gonna be a little more limited in your blade selection. Now let's talk about dust collection. Uh, there is a nice port on here that you can connect a dust extractor to, and it does a decent job. I mean, compared to other miter saws on the market, the dust collection here is really pretty darn good. But when you compare it to the Capex, it falls short. Uh, it looks very similar to what's on the Capex, and you've got a rubber shroud down here, and I think the shroud itself is part of the problem. I think the dust collection would be more effective if you had a wider shroud, and you could see the, this cardboard. This is not something that comes with the saw. Uh, I've just taped that in there to try to express experiment with what size shroud is gonna give me the best results. So I think this dust collection can improve, but I think it needs a little bit of re-engineering to get there. Uh, still, better than just about any other miter saw on the market, with the exception of the Capex. Now because I use this saw for very precise cuts, I like to clamp my work down. That is one of the things that I really miss about the Capex. It had a very uh, nice quick action clamp that you could just slide down and lock in like two seconds. This guy has one of these doojobbies. Almost there. Ah, there we go. But 
now I want to cut this piece, so... All right, so you get the point. Bottom line is it's kind of slow. Now it does have the ability to lift out of its socket in the back and you can sort of quickly reposition it to a different location and it makes it a little bit faster, you know, but ultimately it's still nothing like a very quick release clamp. Oddly enough, Bosch does make a quick release clamp and I picked it up hoping it might fit this saw, but it kind of doesn't. Um, the clamping mechanism here gets in the way of the fence, so you have to actually have the post out of the hole pretty far to be able to get that to be effective. So it's, you know, probably good on other saws, but on this particular model, it doesn't really work that well. So hopefully, maybe someday they'll make one just like this for this saw. Now there is one thing that bothers me about this insert here. Even though the table is nice and flat, the insert is just a little bit lower than the table surface. That can create issues if you're dealing with small work pieces as they kind of drop down and they don't really have the reference surface that they need here. Easily fixable because we could probably just shim this insert if we wanted to or make our own insert, which we really should do on a miter saw anyway to get a nice zero clearance in here. So easily fixable, but right out of the box, this is pretty much a, a non-ideal situation. And now we've messed with the settings for this demonstration demonstration, but I put everything back to 90 degrees, and that's one of the big tests of a saw. Can it go back to a previous setting and nail it? So let's do that cut. The cut that I do most often, 90 degrees, and I've got a full 13 and a half inch wide piece of plywood with one jointed edge against the fence. Let's see how it does. Just put my square up against the back edge, and that it's pretty darn good. I don't know that you can ask for anything better than that. So what's the final verdict? Well, I got to give this thing a thumbs up. It's a great buy at $600. It's a good investment, a rock solid performer. It does everything that I ask it to do. In fact, I've got a Makita sitting on the floor that I intended to sort of audition for a permanent role in my shop. And I don't want to touch it. I'm really happy with this guy and I kind of am getting comfortable with it. So um, it's really a rock solid performer. The only things I really miss about the Capex boils down to the dust collection and the clamping system. I'm not sure if the clamping system is going to get any better, but this does work. It just takes a little bit longer. Uh, and the dust collection does seem like something that if I continue to do some research and work with it, in fact, I even read somewhere that the larger shroud from the Capex can be sort of retrofitted onto this unit to make it a little bit more functional. So I don't know. We'll see. But there's room for improvement there, and hopefully I'll figure out a way to get to that point. Um, so, you know, it, it's one of those things. You have to do the research for yourself. Look at some of the other features on the other saws on the market. You may value things you know, differently than I do. But for me, my recommendation here, Bosch Glide, definite purchase. It's a really good buy. Thanks for watching.